I'm Armando Hasirangan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook at Armando Hasirangan. Please like and here comes to ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks. And you can also change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this neurology video, we will look at the neuron. The neurons are the communication cells. They receive signals. What you see, smell, hear is thanks to a group of sensory neurons. Neurons also send out signals or information. When we move our hands every time we breathe, it's because of commands being sent via efferent neurons. So neurons are a big deal. And because of this, we have billions of neurons in our body. Here's a typical structure of a neuron. It consists of dendrites, which receive an information, a signal. The cell body, the soma, the axon hillock, the axon, where information or the signal in a form of an impulse is propagated through. There can be myelin, which wraps around the axon to help in insulation and speeding up the impulse. And all the impulse will end at the synaptic terminal, where the impulse, the information, is passed on to a target cell. So looking at it, an input signal is received by the dendrites gets passed on to the cell body for integration, and then the output signal is released from the synaptic terminal to a target cell for a, a specific response, a desired effect response. The target cell in this case is another neuron, but this neuron is different in that it is an unmyelinated neuron. It has no myelin sheath wrapping around it. This means that the propagation of the impulse along the axon is much slower. When you have a neuron with myelin sheaths, the impulse travels much faster. But now you might ask, be asking yourself, how is the information from one uh, cell, uh, one, from a neuron, is passed on to another cell? Well, let's zoom into this area here, where these two cells are close to each other, where they synapse with each other. Here we have part of the synaptic terminal of the first neuron and its presynaptic membrane. And here is part of the dendrite of the second neuron and its postsynaptic membrane. The gap between the first and second neuron is known as a synaptic cleft. In the ends of the, in the, ends of the synaptic terminal region, like here, we find many mitochondria and vesicles containing what's called neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitters are, are released for communication, for the communication process between cells. What happens is that when a signal arrives at the dendrites of the neuron, it will create an impulse that will carry this information and propagate it towards the terminal. This impulse is an action potential. The action potential will cause once it arrives at the terminal, synaptic terminal, it will cause the vesicles here to release the neurotransmitters into the synaptic cleft, where the neurotransmitters will then bind onto the cell's postsynaptic membrane. So we can say that the synapse is the site for intracellular communication. And seeing that the postsynaptic membrane of the postsynaptic uh, cell belongs to the dendrite of a neuron, it will receive this information and then create a net, another action potential that will propagate along the axon towards the uh, synaptic terminal. So a new input signal is received by the dendrites, it will be integrated in the soma, and then, an, uh, and then it will, the information, uh, the action potential, the information will pass along the axon towards the terminal and um, will be passed on as an output signal via neurotransmitters that will target a particular cell. It can be a neuron again, or it can be a muscle cell or an endocrine cell, any kind of cell, depending on where the neuron is located and what its desired response uh, wants to be, what, what effect it wants to cause. So now that we have an idea of how signals are being passed all around our body, and how we receive signals all around our body, let's learn more about the soma of a neuron and how the neurotransmitters 
are packaged up, are made. So here we have a close-up of the soma of the neuron. We have the nucleus containing the genetic material, the rough endoplasmic reticulum around it with bound ribosomes and free ribosomes for protein synthesis. We have the Golgi apparatus for packaging, and we have the lysosome. Now the protein neurotransmitters are synthesized in the rough endoplasmic reticulum by ribosomes and then packaged up by the Golgi apparatus. So here we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum synthesizing new neurotransmitters that passes them um, onto the Golgi that will then package them up in vesicles. These vesicles containing neurotransmitters from the Golgi are then brought to the synaptic terminal. Here we have the synaptic uh, bulb of the synaptic terminal that we're zooming into. So these vesicles containing the neurotransmitters and also uh, mitochondria, they move down via microfilaments or microtubules and they move to the terminal bulb here. The vesicles are in the synaptic bulb where they can be released via exocytosis to the synaptic cleft when an action potential arrives. The neurotransmitters can be reabsorbed from the synaptic cleft and form vesicles. And then these vesicles can be recycled. They can travel back to the soma of the neuron where they were fused with lysosomes. The lysosomes will digest these vesicles for recycling. So, neurons are a big deal, what we just talked about, for uh, cellular communication, for sending out signals, and also receiving signals, receiving information. These neurons um, I just drew is actually a typical structure or typical shape of, an, of a specific type of neuron, um, an efferent somatic neuron, that is. However, there are a few types of structures neurons can be categorized into. And these structural categories, it can be determined by which part of the nervous system the neurons belong to, if that made any sense. I'll just draw uh, a diagram to explain this. So the nervous system, remember, it can be divided into two major parts. That is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Now I drew two peripheral nervous systems because the peripheral nervous system consists of a sensory division and a motor division, or better yet, an efferent division. The sensory division of the peripheral nervous system consists of sensory neurons that look something like this. It has dendritic branches here, the axon on either side of the soma, the cell body, and then the synaptic terminal here. This type of neuron is categorized under the structure of a unipolar neuron. Now we also have another type of sensory neuron which is slightly similar in that it also consists of dendritic branches but the dendrite will extend to the soma. Then we have the axon and finally the synaptic terminal. This type of neuron is categorized under the structure of a bipolar neuron. As you can see, the unipolar and bipolar neuron are only slightly different. The bipolar neuron, we have two separate processes separated by the cell body. So we have the dendrite and then the axon on one end. The central nervous system consists of many interneurons. Interneurons, you can say, are neurons that bring signals within the central nervous system, so from the brain to the spinal cord, for example. But we also have interneurons that act as glial cells, helper cells. Anyway, these interneurons have some completely different structures to other neurons. An example of an interneuron is this, what I'm drawing. And it doesn't look like it has an axon, but only has a cell body in the center with many dendritic branches around it. This type of neuron is categorized under the structure of an anoxonic neuron. Then we have a multipolar neuron type which contains dendritic branches on one end and then straight away in an axon terminal branch on the other, separated by the cell body. Some multipolar neurons on, in the central nervous system look slightly different than this, and we shall soon see what I am talking about.
Now the efferent division of the peripheral nervous system contains efferent neurons, motor neurons, which are all multipolar in structure. And this is the, this is the type of neuron I drew in the beginning of this video. We can have efferent neurons with myelin wrapping around it, or we can have efferent neurons without myelin wrapping around it. Either way, both are multipolar in structure, in that it consists of dendritic branches, and then we have the cell body, and then the axon and terminal branches. As you can see, this is the other type of multi -neuro multipolar neuron I was talking about in the central nervous system. It, the terminal branch doesn't have to be really close to the soma body. In the efferent division, the terminal branch is uh, extended with the axon. Hope that made sense. And anyway, that is the that was it for the neuron video for neurology. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully I'll make a video on an action potentials or action potentials soon. Thank you.